Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9 and verse 1, And he, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk? But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he saith unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans, that's tax collectors, and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? Now these, um, these uh, Pharisees here, they're actually self-righteous people. They're people who think they're all right. They think they're all right in the sight of God. You know, none of us are all right in the sight of God. We're all wrong because we're sinners when we're born into this world. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. These people here, the Pharisees, were full of themselves. They were a proud sort of a people. And they looked down on others, like these tax collectors and sinners, as they called them. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. In other words, if we're not sick, we don't need a doctor. Why go to a doctor unless you're a hypochondriac? You don't need to go to a doctor if you're not sick. But you and I have a sickness which is far worse than even cancer. It's called sin. You don't feel that a word that's so offensive to the God of heaven. You see, God must judge sin, otherwise he wouldn't be God. The Lord Jesus Christ suffered for our sins upon the cross. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried, but praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I want to stop there. You know, none of us are righteous in the sight of God. We need the righteousness of God to be in heaven. You and I are hell-deserving sinners when we're born into this world. We've got to be born again into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I wonder, have you done that? Have you come in repentance toward God? That is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you're a sinner and then put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For I am not come to call the righteous, that is, those who think they're all right, those who think they can get into heaven by doing good things. Yes, there are certain people who are better than others, there's no doubt about that. But you and I have to realize that we're sinners in the sight of God, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When we're born into this world, we're born as hell-deserving sinners. We need to become saints, we need to be born again into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. It's those who will acknowledge that we are sinners in the sight of God. We need God's salvation. We need forgiveness for our sins. If we don't acknowledge that, we can never ever be saved. In other words, we can never ever be in heaven. The only way we can be in heaven is through the once for all sacrifice of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, which he made for us upon the cross of Calvary. As I said before, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. 
Praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. Matthew 9 verse 14. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast oft or often, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. No man putteth a piece of new cloth on an old garment, for that which is put in to fill up taketh from the garment, and the rent or tear is made worse. Neither do men put new wine in old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler, and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. I understand this woman had been hemorrhaging. She'd been bleeding for 12 years. For she, uh, she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose, and the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. And when Jesus departed thence, or from there two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See, no man know it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. And they went out. And as, as they went out, so it behold, they brought to him a dumb man, possessed with a demon. When the demon was cast out, the dumb spake. And the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He casteth out demons through the prince of the demons. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And truly the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers, laborers are few. I'm out here to preach the gospel of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, to you, because the laborers are few. You see, you and I have to realize our sinful condition before the Lord. If you and I die without Christ, we will be in hell. And God does not want that. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Just change your mind, agree with God that you are a sinner, and then put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. He'll either be your Saviour, or he'll have to be your judge. See, the salvation or damnation, you must make that choice. And it's all determined by what you do 
with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. You'll either receive him or you will reject him. Make a wise choice this afternoon. Get right with God as a result of faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you prepared to do that today? It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, and yet God will have all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. The truth is found in the Word of God, the Bible. It's also found in a person. The Lord Jesus Christ said, and only He could say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I wonder, are you a child of God? We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. We've got to come to know Jesus Christ as our Saviour. Otherwise, we'll be in hell at the moment of death. I wonder what will it be for you? Heaven or hell? It is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening. Matthew uh, chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, and when he had called unto him, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, who had called, he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these, first Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus and Labius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, uh, lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey. Neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And into what sort of city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go thence. And when ye come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that city, the house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily or truly I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues, and you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they shall they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that um, same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents, and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. 
For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel to the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough that the, for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that receiveth you receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. He that re receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily or truly I say unto you, he shall in no wise or in no way lose his reward. Moving on to Matthew 11. It came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John, Again, those things which ye do hear and see, the blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, what went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily or truly I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. 
and if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. He that hath hear, ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets, and calling unto their fellows, and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he hath a demon. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Zidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted under heaven, shalt be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save or except the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's what the Lord wants for each and every one of us, that we would find rest, rest from the burden of sin, from the penalty of sin. You see, you and I are heading down to hell because of our sins that have not been forgiven. But I'm here to tell you this afternoon, I'm here to preach the Lord Jesus Christ knowing that he is the only saviour for us poor sinners. Neither is there salvation in any other. There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. You need God's salvation and you need God's salvation right now. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today is the day of salvation. God does not promise us another second, another day. Another second of this day. We've got to get right with God as a result of repentance toward God. That is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. And then put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, he was buried. Praise God, the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures. I wonder, is your soul saved? It's, it all depends what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. You can either receive Christ as your Saviour and be in heaven, or you can reject him and finish up dying and going down to hell in the judgment of Almighty God. It's not worth it. God has made the way of escape through his Son, Jesus Christ. Are you prepared to believe on him? Receive him as your Saviour. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The Bible says we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Don't leave in another second. You're in great danger without the salvation of God, without forgiveness for your sins. Why? Because you're heading down to hell. You're heading into the judgment of Almighty God that will fall upon you for sure if you die without the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour. The question was asked a long time ago, what must I do to be saved? The simple answer was believe. 
on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If you're interested in this, look me up. YouTube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening.